Okay, question number five from the sample assessment paper from Pure Mathematics 2, question uh, five, part A. An arithmetic series has a first term A and com common difference D. Prove that the sum of the first n terms of the series is given by this formula, a half n brackets 2a plus n minus 1 times d. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, um, to make it more understandable for those people who maybe don't, not sure about this particular proof. Um, I'm going to do what some uh, mathematician, well, he was just a child actually in primary school at the time, did when his teacher in primary school had to mark some work and was really busy and they, he, he didn't want to teach the class so he thought let me think of a way to keep these students busy for the next like half an hour or so so I can finish this marking so what he said is he, he, he announced to the class okay I'd like you to to add together the numbers all the numbers from 1 to 100 so 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on so that he wanted them to find the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus Four plus five, all the way up to 100 plus 97 plus 98 plus 99 plus 100. Okay, so he wanted him to add them all these numbers together, and uh, you know whoever got the answer first would get some sort of a, a prize or something. Okay, so that's what he tried to get these students to to do, and he thought that he would uh, you know buy some time and be able to do what he needed to do, and the students would be busy just doing this kind of adding up until okay they get the answer remember they didn't have calculators in those days so like 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 4 is 10 plus 5 is 15 plus 6 is 20 and so on and so forth until they reach to adding up the the you know up to 100 okay so one of the students in his class whose uh, surname is Gauss who went on to become a famous mathematician after just a few minutes he put his hand up and he said I have the answer sir and the, student, the teacher was like really surprised and then you know he came out with the correct answer and he's like how did you do that so he explained how he did it so he said what i did was is i wrote the numbers one way like this so one plus two plus three plus dot 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 and then i wrote them in the opposite way so i started with 100 so i did 100 plus 99 plus 98 plus 97 Plus, and for the last four, so I only wrote the first three, you realize there's a particular pattern that you'll see in a minute. And then for these last numbers, it's like he, he ended with one, and then the one before that is going to be two, and then three, and then four, and then and so on. Okay, so what, what he noticed is if he actually finds the sum of those two lines of numbers, okay, you end up with the same... Um, number each time. So 1 plus 100 is 101. 2 plus 99 is 101. 3 plus 98 is 101. And you get the same thing. 97 plus 4 is 101. 98 plus 3 is 101. 99 plus 2 is 101. 100 plus 1 is 101. So he realized that there's altogether 100 terms and all of them are 101. So he said, okay, the sum of the first 100 terms is going to be 101 times 100. But what I've got here is I've got twice the sum because this will be the sum of 100 terms and this will be the, also the sum of the first 100 terms, but just backwards. So I've got the answer here is twice as big as it should be. So then he divided that by 2. Okay, so this gave him 1. It will be easy to multiply the top first. You just have to add 2 zeros. So 1, 0, 1 with 2 zeros divided by 2 okay so 2 into 10 goes 5 and 2 into 100 goes 50 so you end up with 50 50 okay so 5050 is the sum of the first um, 100 terms and that's how quickly he got the answer and the teacher was really surprised so just just making sure of that 101 times 100 and divided by 2 50 50 okay so that's not the answer to this question by the way okay that's not the answer to this question however this is an uh, this will give us an idea of how to proceed in answering this question so i'm going to follow a similar kind of um, method and i'm going to answer this question using the same kind of idea in our case 
the first term is a. In this case, the first term is one, and the common difference is one. It's like one plus two plus three. In our case, the common, the first term is a, and the common difference is is d. So the first term will be a, the second term will be a plus d, the third term will be a plus two d, the third term a plus three d, and so oh, sorry, the third term a plus two d, and so on. Okay, and the last term will be a plus n minus one times d. So let me just get rid of all of this stuff here now. Oops, what am I doing? One second. I thought I had locked it in place. Okay. All right, so let me just get rid of all this stuff here now. And then do the same thing, but with our, our numbers that we have here. Okay, so the sum of the first n terms, if a is the first term and d is a common difference, the first term will be a, and the second term will be a plus d, and the third term will be a plus 2d. Okay, and now, when we get to the last term, it's going to be a plus n minus 1 times d. And if you get the term, the term before the last term is going to be a plus n minus 2 times d. And the term before that is going to be a plus n minus 3 times d. Okay, so I'm going to write that same sum but backwards. So I'm going to start with the last term, a plus n minus 1 times d. Then I'll have a plus n minus 2 times d. Then I'll have a plus n minus 3 times d plus, and I'm going to have here 1, uh, sorry, a and this will be a plus d, and this will be, gone, I'm kind of moving upwards here, aren't I? Let me move this down a bit. I should try and be, you should try and be as neat as possible when you're doing something like this. Okay, so the last term is, the first term is a, but written backwards now, so then you've got a plus d, and then you've got a plus 2d. Now, if I take these two lines and I add them together, if I add these two, two lines together, I'm going to have a plus a plus n minus 1 times d. So that will be 2a plus n minus 1 times d. And if I add these two terms together, I'm going to get the same thing. And I'll show you up here how it's the same thing. You'll have a plus d. Okay, plus. Now, if I expand this so that I can then add the like terms, I'll have a plus. I'm going to have n times d. And I'll have minus 2d. So adding these together, I'm going to get a plus a, which is 2a. Okay, and I'll have um, d minus 2d. So I'll have basically here, sorry. I'll have d minus 2d. So, oh, come on. I'll have, sorry, plus nd minus d. Because d minus 2d is minus d. So I'll have 2a plus, and if I take out d as common, I'll have n minus 1 times d. Okay, so that's the same thing as okay what we got here. So I'll have 2a plus n minus 1 times d. And the same thing will happen here. If I expand this, I'll have a plus, I'll have nd minus 3d, and the 2d minus 3d gives you minus d. And then I'll get the same line here, which is going to be 2a plus n minus 1 times d. And of course, the same thing will apply here. So plus dot, dot, dot. I'll have the same thing here, 2a plus n minus 1 times d and you'll see that you get the same thing for every single term just like we got when we did uh, 1 to 100 we got 101 okay for every single term here we're going to get the general formula 2a plus n minus 1 times d so we can say here if i add these if i add these um, basically the sum of all of these okay so this is basically sn plus sn which is 2 times sn Okay, I'm not supposed to write in that margin, but I um, can't help it right now. So 2 times the sum of the first n terms is given by all of this. Now, how many terms are there here? Well, we start off with one term, the second term, the third term, all the way up to the nth term. So the number of terms is n. So we got n times all of these. So 2 times the sum of the first n terms is equal to n times 2a plus 
n minus 1 times d. And then if I divide both sides by 2, because I want to find that I don't want 2 times the sum of the first n terms, I want 1 times the sum of the first n terms. I have n over 2, and I'll have 2a plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, so there we have our formula, which is exactly what we got there, a half n. So n over 2 is like half n, 2a plus n minus 1 times d. And there we've proved it, okay? I've taken a bit longer than I should have, just so that you could get some background to how um, you can think about it using numbers. It makes it a lot easier to understand rather than all these letters. It gives you the idea. And one other thing you'll notice is the first term is a, and the last term is a plus n minus 1 times d. And if you think about it, this is like, this, isn't, this is not part of the answer to this question. This is just a side point. One of the formulae that we use sometimes is derived from this, just for your information. I can write this as a, which is the first term, plus a times n minus 1. So a plus a times a plus n minus 1 times d n minus 1 times d okay now if you notice that's the first term and that's the last term in the sequence so another formula that people use sometimes especially when you know the first and the last term of a arithmetic series you can write the first term plus the last term okay so that's another formula which is based on this it's because a is our first term and a plus n minus 1 times d is the last term which is the same as 2a plus n minus 1 times d so they're the same formula so if you know the first and last term of arithmetic series um, you know and you know the number of terms you can find the sum pretty easily by using this formula instead of that formula okay so there's the answer to part a and I'll do part b in the next video